students often get puzzled while studying geography optional for UPSC. The, sub, the reason being the 20 chapters in 10 chapters in each paper 1 and paper 2. It, the confusion lies how to decipher the syllabus, how to study in an effective manner that with minimum efforts you can gain the maximum marks. Here at Insemble IS, we have with the clustered approach, we have reorganized the syllabus into 18 chapters for your better understanding and planning. Vande Matram, welcome to Insemble. I am Amal Sarkar. In today's video, we will discuss the syllabus of Indian industry, which is an integral part of paper 2. It has its applications in GS paper 1 and also in the prelims examination. So let's see the syllabus. The first topic is evolution of industries. When the topic is evolution of industries, so it has two components, how some particular industries have evolved and what has been the government's contribution in the evolution. Government's contribution in the evolution is through the government policies. Then the second topic is location factors of cotton, jute, textile, iron and steel, aluminium, fertilizer, paper and chemical industry, pharmaceutical industry, automobile, cottage and agro based industries. So I will cite you an examples how are questions asked and what is the syllabus trying to say. Let us see the first question. Discuss in brief the industrial development in the five year plans. So the question is addressing the contribution of government in the evolution of industries. How the particular industries have evolved due to the government's five year plans. Let us see the question number two. Analyze the location, distribution pattern and problems of cotton textile industries in India. As we know, cotton textile is a major industry in India. It provides employment to lakhs of people, not only to the farmers, but also to the workers. So in questions like this, there are three uh, components. First, the location factor. Why is certain industry located in certain regions? Second, how is it distributed? The third, the problems and the challenges. The fourth thing which you need to add in these type of questions is what are the government's effort? You will write these government efforts in the form of schemes and you can write it as a conclusion also. So when you see this question, there are two things with Indian industry. While studying, you can also uh, study the agriculture part of these crops. If you are studying cotton textile industry, you can also study the cotton, the geographic conditions how cotton is grown. Once you come to know that certain, how certain crops are grown, you have a basic idea why these industries are located there. Then there's a concept of material index and Weber's concept of location of industries. As you know that you might have studied in the, in the theory that if the raw material and the finished product are of the same weight, then it can be located either near the market or near the raw material. So the thing, it also depends on the material index as given by Weber. So you need to integrate while writing answers the concepts of paper one. So once you're done with the location and distribution part, then you have to write the challenges. What are the challenges? The challenges are the availability of quality cotton. Then the industry is very fragmented. Then the third is absolute machinery. Fourth is the amount of skill required is has not improved. Then for that skill part, government has introduced the summer scheme. For the absolute, uh, absolute machinery part, government has introduced the scheme for technological upgradation. See, whatever the, be the problems, for that problems, there's a solution. And this solution is, is in the form of a scheme. Then further, then the production link scheme, there is a, then the amount, this the stagnation of export. There is a need of investment. If there is a need of investment, the government will increase the FDI. So this is how you need to understand. You don't need to mug up about the pro 
you just need to understand the problems once you need once you uh, understood the problems you can automatically answer the uh, solutions because it is an automatic correlation let us see the third question examine the factors responsible for the distribution of sugar industries in india see sugar industry are located near the raw material and not near the product why because the material index is not one it is much lesser than one because the final product's weight is much lesser than the raw material so in order to minimize the transportation cost that these industries are located near the raw material so once you know this basic concept then you need to know where sugar canes are grown then you know where sugar canes are grown then you can mark the distribution question number 4 discuss the growth location and distribution of iron and steel industry in india as we are, as we know iron and steel industry is a very integral part of india's economic history you need to know what are the raw materials in iron and steel industry and the how the industry has evolved so the question is asking you its growth it's asking shortly is in, in directly it's asking you it's about its evolution its location and its distribution so all iron and steel industry is dependent on many factors because it is dependent on many raw materials for energy for iron ore magnetite and other things let's see question number 5 why does the pharmaceutical industry concentrate largely in the western region of the country as we know pharmaceutical industry is a foot loose industry what is a foot loose industry an industry which is not dependent upon its factor of production so it can be set up at any place it it can be set up at any place so this is the concept of foot loose foot loose industry see pharmaceutical industry india is a very big player in pharmaceutical industry and they are situated mostly in the western coast what are the reasons the reasons are first thing it's near to the market it has the western coast has many ports so the raw material in fact more than 80% of the active pharmaceutical ingredients are imported so they imported by the by the ports second the western states like the maharashtra gujarat they have very specialized industrial policy targeting these industries then third they get they get easy accessible land and then the provision of infrastructure and capital so these are the reasons why pharmaceutical industry is located in the western coast let's see the next topic industrial house and complex including public sector undertaking industrial regionalization and new industrial policies let us give an example what is an industrial complex describe the growth problems and prospects of any major industrial complex in india see in this topic the two things industrial houses and industrial complex this question is specially targeting the industrial complex industrial complex is a region where there is an agglomeration of industries there are some industries which gain from agglomeration agglomeration gains agglomeration is a gainer because the unit cost of production decreases because there are some things like uh, infrastructure capital insurance and uh, labor it's the cost gets distributed among a lot of industries then there is forward and backward linkages the so there were two topics industrial house and industrial complex lastly in that last question i was, I was explaining you industrial complex then what are industrial houses industrial houses or business houses which form a group of industries in dealing in different sectors so let us take an example of tata tata group is dealing in many sectors because it has many its subsidiaries different subsidiaries is catering in different areas right from iron and steel to the automobiles to services then the, in within services it's the it it is the consultancy then there is production of different uh, machineries then watches etc 
So then the third thing is PSUs. So as you know, the present go in the present day, the disinvestment has increased. Even there is privatization of PSUs. So if there is a news of privatization of certain PSU, then you need to catch hold. The what are the reasons? What are the reasons that the government is doing so? You need to understand the basic concept, and you can cite that example in the exam. Oh, let us see the next question. Name the major industrial regions of India, indicating the basis of the identification. Highlight the the basic problems. The uh, the topic was industrial regionalization. So they are asking you what are the major industrial regions of India. So there are some major industrial regions. There are some minor industrial regions. You have to name them, draw them, and explain why are. What are the major industries involved in that in the region? But the second question is asking you, what is the basis of this identification? So you have to write some of the basis. On this basis, that we are able to divide these major industries. You have to highlight them. Then the third part is highlight the basic problems. Every industrial region is facing some challenges. It can be some natural challenges or anthropogenic challenges. Challenges from the quality of the raw material, or even the quality of the skilled labor, the investment—it can be a host of factors. Let us see the eighth question: What kind of skill promotion programs have we initiated for job deficient regions in India? Explain. So the third topic was new industrial policies. So let us see skill development program. Is a flagship program of this present government. They have formed a dedicated ministry for skill development. So this skill development, you can assume it is a part of new industrial policy. Earlier uh, questions were addressed directly at the industrial policies. Now, the in the new pattern, even small components like skill development can be asked. But in this question, there the question is targeting. Why? What are the kinds of skill development programs, and why they have been initiated in certain regions? So you need to explain the reasons and give side examples. So let us see an example of Samarth scheme. Samarth scheme is for the skill development in cotton textile. Then Ustad scheme. Then Sankalp and Strike scheme. Then the basic schemes of Pradhan Mantri Koshal Vikas Yojana. So there are some sector-specific schemes and some general schemes. So while writing the answer, you start with the general schemes and then move on to the sector-specific schemes. And when you write the sector-specific schemes, they are you know dedicated to certain pockets of India, because it is some only some uh, regional labor is dealing in in certain product, like some uh, cotton textile, say let's say katha sari or something like that. A certain Uh, labor is only involved in the manufacture of that product so these sector specific schemes have even sub components and these components are directed at these pockets let's move on to the next topic multinationals and liberalization so the question is the topic is addressing multinationals that the mncs and liberalization LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization are the products of the 92-93 reforms. So, hence the topic. Uh, let us see an example. Question number nine: Critically analyze the role of multinational corporation in India's economic development with suitable examples. In whole of this chapter, you need to give examples. Take MNCs. Have the certain advantages and disadvantages also. Advantages being, they are specialized in making certain products. So with this specialization, they are not only training the labor. There's a skill development, there's employment generation, but also production of quality products. Due to the production of quality products, the export will increase. Further, in order to increase the economies of scale, they bring investment. so that's another advantage the disadvantage can be tax evasion 
इट कैन बी कॉम्पिटिशन विथ लोकल इंडस्ट्रीज सी मोस्ट ऑफ द एम एन सीज कैन बी इन द सेकेंडरी सेक्टर ऑल्सो इन द टर्सरी सेक्टर सो वी नीड टू फॉर्म अ प्लान वेयर दीज आर नॉट वेयर दे आर नॉट कॉम्पिटिटिंग बट देर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री टू टू ईच अदर द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वॉज स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन्स इट इज सी एन क्वेश्चन एक्सेस द सूटेबिलिटी ऑफ स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन्स फॉर सस्टेनेबल इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इन इंडिया यू सी दिस टॉपिक इन इकोनॉमिक्स ऑल्सो स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन आर दोज जोन्स फॉर टैक्स पर्पसेज विच आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया सो स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन्स हैव बीन गिवन सम टैक्स कंसेशंस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज टैक्स कंसेशंस दे ब्रिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट दे ब्रिंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट दे इंक्रीज द क्वालिटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट देर इज एन इंक्रीज ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड द बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड विच इज वेरी मच नेगेटिव फॉर इंडिया इज डिक्रीजिंग सो यू नीड टू साइट एग्जाम्पल्स इन दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल्सो स्टडी वॉट आर द मेन मेजर एस सी जेट्स इन इंडिया लाइक द मेजर एस सी जेट्स आर ऑफ आई टी इंडस्ट्रीज सो वॉट आर द मेजर एस सी जेट्स इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग वॉट आर द एस सी जेट्स इन योर ईस्टर्न रीजन और वेस्टर्न रीजन और नदर्न रीजन सो नीड टू हैव अ ब्रीफ आइडिया द लास्ट टॉपिक इज टूरिज्म इंक्लूडिंग इको टूरिज्म सी टूरिज्म इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया it is contributes are not 2% but 5% of the gdp so tourism is an important uh, integral part of the service sector it is employ it is uh, providing direct and indirect employment to lakhs of people uh, questions have been asked on tourism let's see an example examine how eco tourism activities could be important livelihood options in the himalayan and northeastern regions of the country so the question is addressing to the eco tourism what is eco tourism eco tourism is a tourism in which sustainable and responsible tourism so eco tourism is about contributing to the nature it is about living in harmony with nature and if you live in the harmony with nature it can only be done by taking into account the local population so the question is addressing the livelihood options in himalayan region and how eco tourism can help so there are different components of eco tourism right right from adventure sports to uh, nature watching to the nature watching then the mental health being today the mental due to mental stress a lot many people are traveling to the himalayan and northeastern regions so so when due to mental stress and a lot of people are traveling to the himalayas and northeastern region so a lot many people are getting employed right from the hotels to the traveling part which also includes sightseeing and cultural interactions so there are other components also so need to so you need to write the answer in a holistic manner cite examples uh, there can be also a question of medical tourism as we know the india is a you know hot plate hot country for uh, cheap medical cost people from europe and usa especially in aris come to india for surgeries so in the medical tourism is increasing the it is contributing much more larger to the indian gdp so a question can be asked on on the medical tourism and what impact it can have to the indian gdp so today we'll stop at the discussion of indian industry in our next video we will discuss the syllabus of another subject and i will cite you some examples in order for a proper understanding of the subject thank you to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos